I'm going to come in. Yeah, that's uh, fine, that's fine. I'm, just, I'm going to be quick. Is it on, yeah? Yeah, it's on. It's, it's All right. Going. Okay, John. And I will, I will take in as best I can. <laughs> okay. I will be listening. I've got the video anyway. It'll look yeah, yeah, and so, can, so I am listening. I can have a little read there. Okay, my professional. Am I looking at this camera? It's like, yeah, like yeah. I'm in a room. Or yeah, yeah. All right, this professional development module. Um, Shall I speak to you or do you want me to speak to the camera? <laughs> a bit of both. A bit of both. Whatever's comfortable for you. I know what okay, you mean. I'm going to speak to you. The camera can do its own thing. All right, yeah. even if you're on your computer. So here's my professional development. Uh, development module. Um, the locations in which I carried out my work experience um, were at a small private college just down on the King's Dock, an establishment called Mo Training Corporation. Um, there's lots of undercover um, unrecognised institutions around the city centre. Um, so it's not like a university, like so it wasn't JMU, it wasn't uh, Hope or you know one of the, the mainstream universities. But there are plenty of uh, colleges that will provide um, educational facilities. So I did mine at May Trade, May Training Corp, um, Corporation. Um, as I said, it's a private uh, college based in Liverpool City Centre. And um, it's generally for people aged between around 16 and above who um, are looking for an alternative route as, as opposed to college or the, you know, your, your uh, stereotypical school, then university, etc. And they kind of specialise in apprenticeships and MVQs and a few other courses. Um, so I did one, I did, t t I think about I think 12 hours in this location and 12 hours in the next. The next location was a place called Binary Cell, which is based on Seal Street, which is a very high-tech, digitally based um, recording studio and creative multimedia space down on Seal Street. A few of the class members will be aware of Binary Cell because last year, I'm sure, Alan Watson, during the studio assignment, um, took some people down there to show them a few recording facilities. So it was good to get into a real professional studio outside of a, a college establishment or a university establishment. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so um, Mo Training Corporation and okay. Binary Cell. Um, okay. The initial aims um, of the work experience, as stated in our first presentation, for me it was to find, uh, as I kind of mentioned just then, a studio but outside of a college institution, outside of university, where it really is in the real world and it is really from a business perspective, so it's a practical working environment. So that was my particular aim. And when, if I was able to get involved with a studio, the real types of, the, the, the sonic areas I'd, I'd like to kind of elaborate and learn and, and, and I'm most enthusiastic about to learn are mixing audio, mastering audio, equalization, and uh, recording techniques. So your, your microphones and um, just a real elaboration um, upon some of the basic things that we learned during the first year in the studio module. So these are some of the, the you know, the, these are some of the points I had in my skills audit that when I go to these people, I'd like to say, you know, as well as getting involved in any way, shape, or form I can, even if it's volunteering or just to observe, if I get a chance, I'd like to, you know, kind of look at these four areas. Sorry, I had to rust, but I was told at five o'clock and so I had to get onto it. Um, so, just a quick catch up. I did my mo training, which is where Nikki Blaze teaches. She's got a college down there, you know, Nikki Blaze. And um, binary cell, and you two would have known about binary cell from last year, wouldn't it? I missed out last year, so it's good to catch up this year. And see what's going on down there. Okay, so at, main, at Mo training, um, my main involvement allowed me to shadow one of the course tutors, um, Nikki Blaze, as you already know, um, one or two other um, music tech teachers who um, basically outlined the course syllabus. So I was able to shadow these tutors and gain an understanding of what they actually teach in the music, uh, music technology department of this particular college. Um, other opportunities allowed me to participate in class-related tasks. So at times I'd sit off like a student and get involved with what the students were doing, and um, you know just get get basic get get involved with basic tasks like using their digital audio workstations, um, mixing vocals, and just basic stuff where we'd record a track, like in the classroom, like we did many times in the studio downstairs with Alan. We just sit there and record something basic, just maybe ten seconds of guitar or ten seconds of vocals, and then from there the the, the tutor's got a basis to start. Um, to start setting tasks, mix this and see, you know, just make, play with the parameters and see what type of sound you can get from a basic recording. So basically just shadowing the tutors and, and seeing what the course has to offer and kind of what the, you know, what the students get out of this particular course. Okay, they also use Pro Tools as, and, and Cubase, a lot of the programming that we're used to, software interfaces that, you know, we, we've uh, learned to use on our course so far. So yeah, Mo Train are pretty much a shadow, shadow the tutors learn about the course. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, this is kind of what I learned mostly when I was at, at my training. 
Um, so Binary Cell, on the other hand, was a, a kind of a different perspective because it was a practical working environment. It is an established business. I worked with an established engineer called Mark Brockersby. He's, he's worked in studios all over the country, such as Abbey Road and a few other places. And so it was good, as I say, to get out of a classroom or a college and really see how we make a living doing this type of thing, you know, how we provide doing this. So my main involvement at Binary so allowed me to closely shadow one of the chief engineers, Mark Brockersby. I spent much of my time listening and observing the functionality of recording facilities as he demonstrated to me as a lot of the stuff was, you know, far superior to the facilities that we've been um, we've been given the opportunity to use here. So I spent most of my time just watching and, and you know, just seeing the same fundamentals. Um, Alan Watson once described a situation where I looked at a mis mixing desk and I was completely baffled. It was like channel after channel, I don't understand it. But he said basically you can drive a car in it, so even if you've got a Ferrari or you've got a flipping 1979 Mini, you get in there and you're going to get a clutch brake accelerator. So the, the same fundamentals are there, do you know what I mean? You go into a studio and, and a lot of them praise um, praise the quality of their establishment on the microphones, you know, it's very important. Your speakers, your output, you're very important, your interfaces and your preamps. So the fundamentals are all there, but because it was a real kind of high-tech environment, it was good to just sit back and watch this dude demonstrate how, how, his, uh, how his facilities worked. Um, it was also good to talk about um, studio design. And um, I keep referring to the fact that a lot of what we learned in the first year um, it was good to notice these things actually practically incorporated in a real studio. So you know when we spent all that time talking about room modes and all rare refractions and compressions and, and all that type of stuff, it was good to go into a studio and the first thing I noticed is that you've got this octagonal shaped room. And when I question the, question the engineer about it, he starts talking about room modes and a lot of the stuff that we spoke about. So it was good to just see how things work practically. You know? um, I was also able to revise some of the you know, recording techniques that we learned in the first year and learn, learn a lot of new stuff at the same time. Um, so taking a step back to, to Mo training, um, as I stated, some of my main uh, uh, objectives in the skills audit were mixing vocals, or just mixing in general and equalisation. So an example that I had when I was at Mo training um, were mixing vocals, which I didn't really spend too much time doing doing in the course over here. Um, the things that I, the, the basic things that I, I learned that I didn't really know when we were working here um, is when you start with vocals. I swear I move on Pro Tools as well. Um, depending on the type of vocal performance, obviously it can be so versatile. It's good to try and clean up the bottle, bottom end first, um, then your middle, and then your treble. And when you add compression, it's always going to bring up um, the emphasis of the bass frequencies. So it's not good. I always used to think that if I'm going to record vocals, the first thing you have to do is start chucking on compression and start playing with all your parameters. But it was good to um, kind of break down the different frequencies in a, in, a, in, a, in a speech band and kind of, you know, try and, try and understand that in, in different scenarios you may need to equalise in, you know, you may need to equalise in, in, a, in, a in a different scenario. So if, some, if someone's very bassy, then you don't want to, you know, don't want to try and emphasise that too much with compression. If some is like a woman and speaking, you know, with a higher pitch tone, then you may need to take a different perspective. Um, so it's good to actually try and, you know, mix, mix, a, mix a random vocal. Um, Equalisation um, was also part of that, it's just basics on, uh, on Pro Tools. And um, where it was a college, there were only really the, the digital audio workstations, so it's not like I had the opportunity of buying myself. But I did get to you know, play around with a few, a few vocals here and there. When I came to binary cell now, it was a different thing. And what I was most enthusiastic to learn about were microphone techniques, and as I said, the working business perspective of a studio. So with Mike and I got to revise some of the stuff we learned before. So when we did a project last year and we were in G2, we done we tried to do a blum line one time and it went wrong, but we still tried to learn it and we still had the principle right. Where using the pol polarity response of two figure and eights, you can kind of make an omni shape from two microphones if they're you know if they're directed. I think 90 degrees. So we had one figure of eight. I think we used a fat head and a second fat head before. And in this type of formation, we were able to create this omni kind of polarity response effect with two figure array. So that was cool. So I got to revise that we learned that before. And we'd also learn um, middle and side Alan Watson where you have a cardioid straightforward and then you've got a figure of eight but off axis. And the idea being the cardioid would is directly facing it towards the sound source, whereas the figure of eight is off axis about one hundred and eight degrees. <coughs> and by duplicating by duplicating um, the channel taken on the figure of eight and putting them out of phase, you can create a stereo miking technique because now you've got a signal from the cardioid and you've got two signals 
from um, the middle inside, you've got two signals from the outer phase. So that was cool to revise that, but then it was also good to learn about things like OTRF, which is um, similar to an X and Y, an X and Y stereo miking technique, where you need two exact mics with the same polarity response, but faced together and crossing over at 90 degrees. OTRF is a similar principle, however, the degree space in it is about 120 degrees, so that was good, or, or 110. So it's good to uh, learn a mic miking technique like that. And then also look at X and Y again, and actually use X and Y um, to record like some basic acoustic guitar. I'd never really established that sound or really, you know, had a had a practice of that. So it was good to learn some, you know, some microphone techniques and talk to the man sonically because they, you know, when they're professionals, they they're on, on different wavelengths. They're just as much of the tutors are when they speak about, you know, sound and audio engineering. Um, also, what I learned as well as the microphone techniques is what I really liked most about about binary so was the business side of things. So. It was good to kind of get your head out of the clouds and think that, you know, it's, it might not be straightforward as to finish uni, finish college and just walk straight into a job and be paid money here and there. It was good to understand um, kind of the legalities involved in, 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 in the binary cell establishment in terms of the lease holding, um, um, the, the involvement with the landlords, um, rights on property and how he actually generates revenue. In a, in a consecutive manner to provide for himself and actually develop a career. So it was good to acknowledge the fact that he's not always consistent with money. A lot of it is reciprocal from clientele, do you know what I'm saying? If he's got no work, if he's getting droughts, then you literally do have no money. You can have ups and downs. So sometimes um, in this industry, um, I, I think it's, it's safe to say that there's not always a general consistency, you know, like you would with, with some stereotypical office jobs, you're going to get a nine to five and a specific amount of hours every week and you're going to get this amount of money every year. So it was kind of scary, scary actually to, to, to talk about it because, you know, um, sometimes Mark, Mark will describe it as you're kind of, not on a knife edge, but you're kind of taking a risk, do you know what I'm saying? Because your money's not always going to be consistent and it's not going to be tied into a contract. So you really do have to graph to generate, to generate what you're doing. So it's good to acknowledge that it, it really is, you know, Really, it's a tough industry to uh, you know generate consistent revenue. So yeah, was, as I say, it was outside of college, it was outside of university, and it is a, a, a real work environment. So it's good to you know see how that type of business does progress. Okay. Um, so as an analysis at the end, um, to crit critique some of the uh, aims and objectives, or what I feel that like I didn't really get round to at all when I was doing work experience. Over overall, I feel that the time spent so far. Um, was quite beneficial, definitely, and as I said, I'm still yet to rack up a few hours um, um, after Monday. Um, so I was enthusiastic to shadow, you know, an experienced engineer because he'd been there and he's worked in the industry. So that was good, you know, speaking to guys actually been in a, a, a load of different scenarios with bands, small bands, big bands, and um, as I say, it was good to visit that type of studio. I wasn't in the college. However, I do feel that there were areas where my learning objectives were not met at all. And particularly in both institutions when I ever inquired about mastering. So I really felt that, not so much that they couldn't um, kind of provide me with the knowledge that I was after or, or um, I could start learning about what mastering means. Just in most scenarios that I felt when I was doing work experience, they didn't really have any, there weren't really any, uh, they didn't really have the materials so where they could really show me what mastering was about. So the days that I spent with Mark so far, although he is highly involved with mastering, there wasn't anything that he was mastering at the moment or any particular tasks related to mastering that he could really take me aside and say, this is where we can kind of start and you know, I can start you know, understanding the basics of, the, of this type of area. So to be fair, that's something I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm yet to research on and, and yet to keep learning as the course progresses. And as I uh, you know, network for more work experience, I want to start to think about that more. But it was something that I really didn't, you know, I really didn't even get any, any light shed on at all. Um, for, no, for no fault of the institution myself, it's just uh, it seemed to be a very particular and specific kind of region of audio reproduction. And um, it sounds to be quite complicated. All I had learned really, um, I was given an example of Mo training um, where uh, Nikki had gone and, and said like a speech, like a couple of vocals, like I don't know, what's up, how's it going? And say that, you know, just for an example. And in those few words, what's up, how's it going? Um, in mastering, it's, it's not just about um, it's not just about how 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 pronunciations will, will vary on different con on different syllables or vowels. On mastering, they get as intricate as possible, and so you can literally think about how will the parameters of a of a sound wave vary over literally just like one word or a couple of letters. So the idea of mastering I get so far is just to get as intricate as possible, but I didn't really get any chance to 
to uh, you know practice any of that at all. So that's something I like to <coughs> research. On. Um, so yeah, that's the basis of my work experience up to date. Um, hopefully, there's a lot more to come. Um, this is just the basic stuff. And um, yeah, that's how I feel that I've kind of coincided with what I initially wanted to learn anyway, with what I've learned so far. Okay. Okay. All right. Well done. <laughs> we'll have to like it. We'll have to shoot, won't it? Yeah. Sorry to be like abrupt. Uh, we will have to.